Today we're going to take a look at Sunday's games and go matchup by matchup, game script by game script, identify a must-start player, look at some sneaky starts, really look at the game script involved and see somehow these players can hit, how we can stack these players, and everything else when it comes to strategy. But before we dig in here today, we need to click that subscribe button because you need to because I'm going over the waiver wire every day throughout the week. I'm helping you set your lineups with these videos. In the offseason, I'm a huge resource with advanced metrics, player values to help you with your drafts and to help you with ideas and strategies for your drafts as well. You need to click that button so you don't miss out next year when these videos start firing up helping you build your fantasy teams click that button stop missing out let's start looking at these matchups for week 15 the first week of the fantasy playoffs here first matchup we're looking at atlanta falcons at the carolina panthers 33 and a half over under these low over unders has been a trend all season long they've been getting lower and lower throughout the year we have a tight spread we got some quarterback issues. Both teams are a little bit slower. That being said, B. John Robinson, because running backs get right against the Panthers. Five targets a game, 19.6% target share, 19.5 touches per game. He's been solid. He's been steady. Drake London, too. He's been getting deep targets, pushing around a 20-25% to 25 target share, getting air yards when you're looking at the Atlanta Falcons. Those are your two mean guys. And then also... Guys like Kyle Pitts, you're throwing in as a whim with no certainties. Run back pieces for the Panthers. We really don't have anybody we truly trust. Adam Thielen has been consistent this year. He has had some down points, but we know he's going to get targets. We know he's going to get opportunities. Same thing with Chuba Hubbard. We know he's going to be touching the football a lot in this game because they like to give him the rock. That being said, he has to cross the goal line. He has to break off some runs. But he should be good enough to get you by. And if it's a down week, it's a down week. But you know you're chasing touches when you're looking at Chuba Hubbard. New York Giants at the New Orleans Saints. We got Tommy Tough Nuts on the road. Low over under here at 39. But it could break because you can really sling it on the Giants defense here. And we got a deep spread. So this could be an interesting matchup going forward here. Of course, Alvin Kamara is the easy start. You're never not going to start him, especially when he's seeing six targets a game and a 19.5% target share and getting almost 20 fantasy points per game in his last four games. Solid player. Chris Olave, good to go like always. And then run back option for the Giants is Saquon Barkley. If you want to play around a little bit with the wide receivers, maybe Wandale Robinson or Jalen Hyatt if you want to go YOLO. I don't recommend it. Maybe for DFS or if you're really hurting, you got to play with some upside guys. Maybe. Alvin Kamara though, steady Eddie. Now we got the Bears at the Browns here, 38 and a half over under. So another low one here. Tight spread though. Quarterback issues with the Browns. Bears is kind of on the ups right now. That could push things. We got the tough defense on the Browns as well. They're bend but don't break when it comes to allowing fantasy production. But Jerome Ford's got a smash spot here. He's getting a lot of touches per game, almost 15, especially in his last four. 12.6 PPR fantasy points per game during that time. He should be steady, Eddie. He should at least score enough to get you by 10 to 13 fantasy points. When you put him in, that's what you really should expect out of him. And that's what we're seeing here from week 10. Week 10, 11.9. Week 11, 11.9. Week 12, 11.9. Week 13, 14.2. Week 14, 13.2. So maybe we got a glitch in the system, but he likes to score 11.9. He likes to score that amount of points. Let's see what happens here. But this is a matchup where they could use him. He can be effective. He can score enough to get you by. I'm not saying he's going to be over the moon or anything like that. Not exactly a must start, but a guy you feel safe with. Amari Cooper, Elijah Moore, who's getting the targets in this game? One of them will, maybe both. But one will probably hit good enough. The other will probably tread water. That's what I'm guessing. Elijah Moore still getting targets. Still seeing a good target share. And Amari Cooper had a good week last week. Run backs, DJ Moore, because he does have that upside still, even in a negative matchup here. And Deontay Foreman, we're paying attention to him, but we want him next week against the Cardinals for sure. 
We want him next week against the Cardinals, and I've been hammering that home all week. If he's on waivers for whatever reason right now, pick him up and stash him so you do not have to go up against him next week when he plays the Cardinals. Because if you have to, that might be a tremendous event that really impacts your fantasy season. And I don't care if he goes off or not against the Cardinals. I do not want to risk that. I do not because the Cardinals allow a lot of fantasy points to running backs. Jets at the Dolphins, 37 and a half over under. We got the Dolphins here at home here, and the uh, over under is very low, and we got a thick spread. That's very interesting. The Dolphins are rolling in with some injuries here. We got to pay attention to Garrett Wilson. Last four games, 10.6 targets a game, 30% target share, and they're starting to spam him a little bit. 14 targets last week against Houston. And against Miami last time, he saw 10 targets catching 7 balls from 44 yards. I think he's good to go. Brees Hall is always good to go. You're never not going to start him. And you're really not going to stretch things out with the Jets. God have mercy on your soul if you stretch your lineup with some of these ancillary players on the Jets. God have mercy on you. We're watching Tyreek Hill. We're watching the news there. Jalen Waddle as well. Mostert might be good to go. Devin Achen, another player we're looking at. You're starting whatever Dolphins who are on the field healthy. I'll say that. We're still watching the news on these guys. It's early Saturday morning here. We're watching the news, seeing who's in or out. I think we're going to see an abrupt injury report, but I want to pay attention to the news. And if they're on the field and they're looking good, we start them. That being said, Chiefs at the Patriots, 37 over under. Another low one. But I'm going to say this now. I probably should have said this in the middle of the video. I do not think all these game scripts are going to be boring as hell as Vegas is saying this because we haven't had one over 40 yet. 37 over under is kind of tight. We can kind of see that. The Chiefs do not wheel and deal on offense like they were the last few years. Patriots are a little bit slower. They run a lot of clock. We got a, a deep spread here, but we're going to have some games pop off. I'm talking on the macro, not just this contest. That being said, Vegas is not too excited here. Ezekiel Elliott's getting all the touches. He's going to go yellow in this game, and because of that, he's going to score enough to get you by. He's going to get you like 10 to 13 fantasy points at the least. If he can cross the goal line, that's cool. That's going to help us out a lot, but he should get you around 10 to 13 this week. Should be getting all the touches. That should be a good benefactor. And then the run backs with the Chiefs. Rashi Rice has been hot. Let's keep rolling with that. Let's see him get 7 to 10 targets in this game. And for the love of God, Chiefs, let him get a normal eight out of like 9, 10, 11. Let him get something normal here. Games of an 8 out of 1, 4. It's not cutting. It's not allowing him to hit his upside. We're talking about a rookie wide receiver who should be rising the ranks heavily, but the ADOT is really suppressing him, which is good. You can get him on the cheap, maybe on Dynasty, maybe not. If I had him on my team, I'm probably not going to tell you to buy him off me because I'm going to say, hey, he's getting targets. He's doing well these last few weeks. I got some good indicators. I'm good to go. You're going to have to really pay at price. You're not going to get a discount. Clyde Woods Hilaire versus Jared McKinnon still. I don't trust these running backs. This is a matchup where you're not going to trust it. Really, you're playing Russian roulette, seeing who scores the touchdown. That's what you're doing with these running backs. You're going to tell me, which one do I start? Which one do I start? Bruce, who do I start? Russian roulette, Roshan bow yourself up. Whoever scores the touchdown is the one you're going to want, and you're not going to know who it is. You're just not, and that's how it is. And that's fantasy analysis. That really is. I'm not here to really sugarcoat it. I'm not going to give you a guy just to give you a guy. Clyde Edwards Alaire led him in touches there at the running back position. If you want to roll that, that's a shade safer. That is. Jeremy McKinnon's more explosive. But the guy who scores the touchdown out of backfield is the guy you're going to want here. Texans at the Titans. 37 over under. 37. CJ Stroud's dealing with a lot of injuries here in this offense at the wide receiver spot. The Titans here, or the Titans, they're a slower-paced offense. And they like being a little bit slower-paced. They want to run the ball. They want to run some clock. They got Will Levis at quarterback. I can see Vegas doing this. I can see why. And that all makes sense. And it really depends if Will Levis can connect with the deep ball. If he can, then the Texans may have to push it. This is a pass-funnel defense, remember, with the Titans here. And teams like to pass on them. 
And C.J. Stroud's got some options still, and it could be a surprise game. Last four games for DeAndre Hopkins, eight targets a game, almost a 30% target share. But Derrick Henry is Derrick Henry. He's going to be getting his opportunities as well, especially if C.J. Stroud cannot click with this offense, if this offense can't move the ball because we're losing these wide receivers due to injuries. Tajay Spears, too, could be getting it as well. You may want to meet shield Derrick Henry a little bit. You may want to see what you have in Ty J. Spears. He's also starting to run hot. He's not a must start. He's a sneaky start because we are talking about sneaky starts in this video as well. Instead of doubling up because we had a Saturday slate and we had to talk about those games on their own. But run backs in this game off the Texans. Noah Brown, but you're not feeling good at it. You're not feeling good about that at all. Maybe you want to look at Xavier Hutchinson. You're not feeling good at it, but if you want to look at a dark horse from this team, and he's got some quality similar to Nico Collins, and he's got some good ball skills. He can make plays downfield. You might want to look at him. He's not a must start, but he's a guy to pay attention to. If I'm in a 14-teamer, 16-teamer, and I'm hurting a wide receiver, he's a guy you may want to just roster just to see. Just see. And it has to make sense with what you have on your roster. But I'm saying, shine a light on that. Pierce versus Devin Singletary. Eat your heart out on that. Have fun with that one. I'm not trusting it, especially with this offense. But those running backs might be getting more touches this week. Rush and bowl. Do whatever. Rush and roulette. Whatever you want to do with those running backs. Have fun with that. Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Green Bay Packers. Tampa Bay is a pass funnel defense. That being said, we got a 42 over under. That's the first over under today of over 40 right now. And it's still low. Moderate's around 45 range. High end's 50. Exciting is 55 ish. We're not seeing that too often. Tampa Bay Buccaneers pass funnel defense. Remember that when we look at this. Jaden Reed here. Last four games, 6.8 targets a game, almost a 20% target share. Christian Watson out. YOLO balls the read here, getting some opportunities, running a lot of routes out of the slot, but still getting air yards. Very, very good thing to see. Romeo Dubs as well. Romeo out Dubs. <laughs> I love that misspelling there. But Romeo Dubs as well. He's not out, but he's in. And look at him too, because they're going to want to sling it deep. They're hurt at the running back position. They are hurt. You do not want to mess around. Look at these wide receivers here. And feel good about it. Feel better about them compared to other weeks. They're really going to push it downfield a little bit more. Run backs. It's Tampa Bay. It's Tampa Bay. We know what they're doing. We know it's the Mike Evans show. We know it's Chris Godwin. He's off and on. But when you feel like he's dead, he comes back. That's Chris Godwin. He's got God in his name. That's probably why. Rashad White. Because he's solid. Catches balls out of the backfield. Probably going to be that league-winning running back that people are going to sleep on next year in drafts and catching like the third or second round of redraft leagues. Probably so. We know this. We know this. But do we know about the San Francisco 49ers on the road to the Arizona Cardinals? 47 and a half over under, and we have a thick-ass spread here at 12 and a half. And I bet you it's in favor for the Niners. I bet you can say that. 47 and a half over under, though. Man, what did I say earlier about the Arizona Cardinals and running backs? Is there a must start here when you look at the Niners? Yes, I'm trolling. Yes, I'm trolling. Hopefully those people who just don't pay attention to the video and just scroll through, they see this and they try to troll me, but I'm trolling back. Of course, Christian McCaffrey. Of course, Brandon Ayuk. Of course, Debo Samuel. Everybody's going ham here. Of course, everybody on the Niners. Of course. Run backs. Marquise Brown. Look at him. Been battling through that injuries, but he's been suiting up. Do you trust it? Is it a must start? No. No. No one's a must start against the Niners, but you can throw on the Niners a little bit. Also, look at Wilson because he's back from injury. Look at him. See if he can do something in your lineup if you're hurting. You're not trusting it, though. You want to really see him and fill him out, but sometimes you got to take a stance, and you may want to look at that more for DFS. James Conner, you don't trust it, but touches, touches, touches. Sometimes that's just all you need at the running back position. And sometimes just getting touches is all you can get anyways. Washington Commanders at the LA Rams, 50 and a half over under. You can throw it on the Commanders. 
And if you can push the pace on the Commanders, then the Commanders are going to try to push the pace too. Wow. That's what we're going to see here. 50 and a half over under. Spread's pretty thick. Six, seven points. I consider it thick. And if it's much past that, then it's huge. 50 over under. Vegas is saying, hey, let, let's start getting in here. I'm not saying it's going to hit the over. I'm not saying it's going to hit the under when I say this. I'm saying that there's an implied point total here that the, it's going to be a little higher scoring game and points are starting to be scored. We're going to be seeing some opportunities here. Puka Nakua here. Pay attention to him because this is a smash spot for him. This could be a league winning performance out of him today. Could be, I guess you got two more weeks, but it could get you to the next round. Seven and a half targets a game, 22.7% target share. Could see that target share increase. Could see the volume increase. I could see that happening. Kyron Williams, safe bet this week. He's using the passing game between the tackles. He's a bet to make. I do that all day, twice on Sunday. Cooper Cup, he's starting to hit now. He's starting to fire. He's going to be getting some opportunities to run backs. Terry McLaurin was on the injury report. Pay attention to him. Brian Robinson, out. Brian Robinson, out. And when I was making this, it was questionable. He's out. Antonio Gibson. And I'm going to have a video on him. Rodriguez. If you want to get sneaky, if you want to gamble, if you hate your life in redraft, go ahead. DFS, take a look at him. He's free. See if something happens. Maybe he gets a goal line touch. Maybe he gets a touchdown there. Pay attention to that. Cowboys at the Bills here, 50 and a half over under. They were saving those over unders for us. Cowboys and Bills. Cowboys in another water cooler game where you guys are going to be talking to Mildred in the break room about this matchup here and what happened. CD Lamb, of course. Do I need to talk more? 30% target share, 11.8 targets per game, last four games. Tony Pollard getting opportunities here. He's been streaky off and on, I know. But touches are touches. Jake Ferguson, very dependable tight end there. Getting opportunities as well. Used around the goal line. Run backs here with the Bills. Stephon Diggs, of course. Gabe Davis. You're going to have a lot of questions with him, but he gets a lot of air yards. He has been stepping up in targets per game. A little bit more opportunity, a little bit more steady. James Cook getting it work in the passing game. Getting opportunities, being very steady as well. Ravens at the Jaguars. 42.5 over under. Could be a fun matchup and fun one to see what happens here. Let's look at Travis Etienne. 17 touches a game, 12.6 PPR points per game. Calvin Ridley, are you interested in that? Let's see what happens with that one. Run backs, Odell Beckham. I like him. I like him down the stretch. I like his target share. I like the air yards coming from him. I think everything's looking good with Eldale Beckham. He should be rostered in all leagues, but I think it's probably like around 75% or so, something like that. Zay Flowers, too. He's been getting opportunities. Keaton Mitchell, Gus Edwards, you're just gambling here. Gus Edwards is a little bit safer because you know he's getting the goal line work. That matters, of course. Keaton Mitchell, home run threat. I'm going to say the same thing every time. But it does not matter. The matchup doesn't matter with him. He just needs green in front of him. Maybe this will be the first game where he gets 10 carries or more. Maybe he gets you 11, which is not exciting. But it's something to project out for when we look at 2024. Eagles at the Seahawks. The Sea Chickens are here. You can kind of pass on them, but that was more earlier in the season. Eagles, you can definitely pass on them. You can definitely throw on them. It's just harder to run on them. And we got a 48 and a half over under. The over under is pretty solid at that. AJ Brown, because he's AJ Brown. 10 targets a game, 32.8% target share. Devonta Smith sneaking up with a 31% target share over his last four games. Don't sleep on him. Really, you're starting Eagles. You're just starting. I mean, you're starting Seahawks. You're starting your Sea Chickens here. DK Metcalf, of course. This is a good matchup for him. This is a good matchup where you can get deep downfield. The game script's going to get pushed a little bit. Same with Tyler Lockett, Jackson Smith, and Jigba. Both are good game scripts. Lockett, all right for your lineups. Jackson Smith and Jigba, a little bit of a gamble. But if you're going to put them in, this is a good time to do so. I like this matchup for pretty much all fantasy assets who are involved in it. Those are the must-start sneaky starts. I kind of don't want to start, but I have to start for Week 15 for the Sunday slate of games. Let me know who you're starting in the comments below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on the way out. I want to thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video.